Ohio State running back Ezekiel Elliott has rushed for at least 100 yards in every game this season, a streak that dates back to last year and is now 14 games long. Mark has more on undefeated OSU's back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rusher. Already over 1,000 yards rushing on the season, Ezekiel Elliott is emerging as a leading Heisman Trophy candidate. It would be an honor shared by him and his buddies on the offensive line. We were looking at those statistics on the rush yards and, and what we've been able to do while Taylor's been here, and that's been a huge credit to both Coach Warner and the leaders within our unit with Taylor and Jacoby and Pat Chase and those guys. Um, so I think that's really, that's, that's a pride thing for us, absolutely, because that's, that's our product. Yeah, I mean, I think he's been incredibly consistent, obviously. I think it's like 14, 100 year games right now. Um, and that's with people knowing that we're that we're going to run first. Um, so it's not. I mean, Zeke's played great. I think he's been a champion or player of the game almost every single game. Um, so for him to still have that type of production, and I think he's you know, close to seven yards a carry or something like that, um, with teams making a, making an effort to take him away primarily, um, I think he's doing a great job. And you know, this time last year, you know we through the month of uh, September. We just kept improving and improving, and you know, now it's time for us to try to compete for a championship. Um, so I think we'll get back in a rhythm. Um, you know, we have JT back this week, and you know, I just think we'll just keep improving and improving because you know, we got some big games coming up uh, at the end of the year that we really need to perform well in. And as OSU's last Heisman winning running back, Eddie George told Zeke, Heismans are won in November. Recently, Elliott paid off a promise made to the slobs by treating them to a steakhouse dinner that cost Zeke over $400. We did, we did get lobster mac and cheese, and we got, uh, it was great. It was great. Jacoby, bought the, Jacoby actually bought the big seafood sampler platter, like the tower uh, appetizer. It was awesome. Uh, he probably had to take out a loan to pay for it, but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was just kind of a cool gesture by him because obviously he gets a lot of press, but <clears throat> he's not the type of guy to you know, make it all about him. Um, and he, he loves the offensive lineman. He, he always says that he should have been a lineman. Um, so, I mean, we love him, and that's just, that's just, it's just a cool gesture by him uh, to do that. It was actually from the Indiana game. He, we were like, hey, if you get over 200 yards, you got to take us out to eat. And he was like, well, I'll do that. It was the best time ever. It was great. Um, big, nice steaks, and, you know, oh, it, was, it was a great time. So, Better yeah, than was, stat class, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Mr. Roder. <laughs> And, of course, the unstated promises if the Buckeyes and Ezekiel Elliott rush for 200 yards or more in another game that there'll be another trip to a steakhouse for the slobs. As Mike Miller, never a slob, joins us now as we talk a little more about this Ohio State game as they travel to Illinois. And a fighting Illini team, 5-4, and four, which when you consider all the turmoil that's been going on in the Illinois Athletic Department, it's really a surprising record. Fired Tim Beckman yep. just a week or so before the season started, Bill Cubitt took over as the interim head coach, has led the Fighting Illini to that 5-4 and four record. And then earlier this week, Athletic Director Michael Thomas is let go for the, the same reasons that Tim Beckman was let go, for not overlooking his staff well enough and really some abuse on the hands of the coaching staff in terms of both the football program and some other things that are going on in the athletic department. Yeah, I think maybe the women's hoops possibly was part of it. There's absolute turmoil out there at, at Illinois, and although that doesn't directly affect the players, don't be certain uh, that that filters down, that they can see that turmoil uh, as it occurs with the administration and that uh, out at uh, Illinois. But, uh, you know, I think the Illini are going to be uh, ready to play some football. You look at this fighting Illini team, and defensively, they've been pretty strong all season long. Yeah, there's, it's interesting what their defense has done. They've got a good core of linebackers. In fact, they're loaded with Ohio guys, uh, quite frankly, like 16 Ohioans on their roster, and most of their best Ohioans are defenders, like linebackers and some secondary guys. So th that's the best part of the Illini game. But, but the truth of the matter is, most of their wins, almost all of their wins, are pretty weak opponents. Well, it's no surprise there's a lot of Ohioans considering Tim Beckman's ties yeah. to Ohio, former yeah. Toledo head coach, of course, yeah. graduated from Finley, had some Ohio State ties as well. So they, they certainly were recruiting the Buckeye State very hard and, and had some success there. Mm -hmm. Offensively, this is a, an Illinois team that really put it all together for the first time all season last week against Purdue, and I think that's got Ohio State's attention. Oh, it better get Ohio State's attention. I don't care who you're playing, even against a generally a weak a Purdue defense, when you can put uh, 55 or whatever you put on the board against that, maybe I don't think it was that quite quite that high. Uh, 48 to 48 14. against Purdue. 
That's an impressive number, and it's how they did it. They piled up yardage on the ground. But let's don't forget also uh, this Geronimo Allison. He's one of my all-name team guys with something like 56 catches uh, on the season with a veteran quarterback like Wes Lunt. That is a genuine, uh, a genuine weapon that Illinois has. Well, and last year when Ohio State blew out Illinois, Lunt didn't play. He was injured, yep. so, so Ohio State really hasn't seen Wes Lunt yet. Mm -hmm. There's no question. He's lanky. He can throw the football uh, all over the field with accuracy. And when you're accurate, you can pick apart even a good attacking defense like Ohio State. The big question for the Illini is Lunt going to get time to move around in that pocket a little bit if he, if he has to. Most people don't think he will. Obviously, you've got JT Barrett coming back to the Buckeyes this week. Is it just as simple as inserting Barrett back into the starting lineup and this Buckeye team picks up right where they left off? Three weeks ago now at Rutgers? I think it is, to be quite honest with you. The offense won't, will only change simply because of what JT Barrett can do and his decision making. It's not going to change in terms of necessarily schemes or what they're trying to accomplish, and, and all the personnel is, is the same. So I would be surprised if the Ohio State offense doesn't pick right back up where they left off. All right, thank you very much, Mike. As Ohio State has won 29 straight Big Ten regular season games, a victory at Illinois would also be their 17th straight true road game, but it would be their 30th straight Big Ten regular season game, wow. which would set a new record under the current conference landscape. Currently, Ohio State tied with a Florida State run of 29 straight yep. uh, league victories back in 92 through 95. Andy, back to you.